Yes. Greetings and welcome to a sip of inspiration. Every moment in your life is filled with all the opportunities that life has to offer. My name is Stephanie Wilson Coleman. You see, life is a canvas and you decide to color. What colors will you choose for your life today? Listen to the words of the soul. Greetings and welcome to A Sip of Inspiration. I'm Stephanie Wilson Coleman, your host for tonight's episode of Eating to Live. As always, I try to bring you programming that you will be able to take something away from the minute you hear it and implement it in your life every day. Something that will help you live better, to love often, and to laugh more. And tonight is no different. Tonight, we decided to cook. See, I happen to believe that the majority of our ailments can actually be resolved with eating better, with cooking at home. You hear a lot about high blood pressure, diabetes, and some other things, and we know that those are directly related to how you eat. So joining me in this segment is Chef David Blackman. Now, I've got my little handy iPad tool, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Chef Dave. You know, the last time Chef Dave was here, we joked and he said, you know what, i got to cook something, let me cook something. So tonight we've kind of worked it out to where we're going to cook a couple things for you. We're going to do some kind of cooking, sort of, because, you know, we're in the studio and we don't have, have a stove, but we're going to make it work tonight. Now, David, Sh uh, David Blackman is also known as the Culinary Solution. He's been doing this for 19 years. Now, that's a surprise to me. I didn't know that. It's like, my God. How do you fall in love with food for 19 years? And he's got this incredible wit and this incredible humor that makes cooking just fun. He's also currently the program administrator for hospitality, culinary arts, and agricultural sciences for the Chicago Public School System. So not only is he cooking for us today, he cooks for kids all throughout the school system. And that has got to be excited. You know, he is married. And as he says, he didn't get his wife with his good looks. But he got him with his ability to cook. And he has a set of twins that are following his footsteps. So I want to welcome you again today. And we're going to talk about food. Great to be here, Stephanie. Thanks. Thanks. So tell me what you've been up to. The last time you were here, we talked about you going to the White House with mm -hmm. the kids and doing some things. Tell us more about that. I think that is so exciting. Oh, that was pretty cool. We went to the White House. However, Barack Obama was not there. They were, they were here during the uh, G8 NATO summit. Okay. And But we went ahead anyway. We went briefly, and then we went on some other uh, tours around Capitol Hill. Uh, the students, they won a healthy cooking battle. Uh, all the, you know, lunchroom. Everybody uh -huh. talks about the lunchroom right. food not being that great. Well, my culinary students are looking at making it better. And so the winners, because so, all 19 high schools compete, the winners went to D.C. And so I went with the uh, students from uh, Chicago Vocational Career Academy, or mm -hmm. for all you old schoolers out there, CVS. <laughs> okay, so the people go, what's that place? I know. Right. So I took some students there, and uh, we uh, took D.C. by storm, and they came in second place in the national competition. Oh, yeah. my God. What did they cook to get they them there? They did a, a buttermilk oven-fried chicken, a sweet potato salad, and a dish called Cousins, mm. which is a mixture of collard greens and cabbage. And it was a fantastic dish. I really felt it was first place. I mean, it first place in my heart. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the, another dish won from San Jose, California. But it's okay. We're going to get them next year. I know that much, you know. God, so who came up with the idea of the recipes, you or the kids? Well, you know, I have uh, 39 uh, hospitality culinary arts t teachers that work in my department. Okay. So a lot of the dishes are inspirations from the teachers. The teachers help guide the students, say, hey, what about this? How about the time we made this? The students go, yeah, that was good. So can we put this, this, and this together? And they had to price it out, make sure it didn't cost no more than a dollar, and you had to follow the USDA guidelines of nutrition. And so the students really had to put themselves in the same uh, shoes as a, uh, a, a cafeteria manager at each high school. But they had to walk that walk and then see mm -hmm. what it's like. Because it's very stressful. It's not as easy as you think it is. And the students learn that much. But a lot of the dishes are what the teachers, the teachers help drive the students. Mm -hmm. And I'm amazed at what the students come up with, you know, with their guidance and their instruction. So in the school system, do you have a day or a week where you showcase just the foods that the, the kids are creating? Or is uh, it all pre-decided? Yeah, there's, there's so many events that every high school has. Mm -hmm. 
But we have a big uh, a capstone event every year uh, around our early May in which all the high schools, all the high school seniors have to come out and do something for the general public. This year they did it for, because uh, we had the NATO here mm -hmm. in Chicago. Every school picked a different country. And so the students had to write a report about the country. And they had about three or four dishes that they were sampling out that they made, mm. you know, that was authentic to the country standards that the country's known for. Uh -huh. And so, you know, when you go from e every table, you can ask them questions about the country and sample it and then go to another country. So within that time frame, you can go around the world in less than two hours. I call it passport on a plate. It's a big citywide event. The mayor came through and oh. he can eat. <laughs> dude can eat. Yeah. Passport yeah. on a plate. So yeah. what was your favorite? Well, I can't say. I, okay. They, they, were were all, all, they were all your favorite. my favorite. favorite. <laughs> I enjoyed every dish. And, and, and when I do these type of events, students are trying to feed me left and right. And, you know, when it's over, I'm just like, you know, trying to fight itis and a <laughs> whole bunch of other things. But it's a wonderful event, but it showcases our babies. And then every once in a while, I bring them downtown. I uh, have our students get bussed in to sit in the lobby mm -hmm. at, at CPS, you know, to show, you know, the administration how wonderful the kids are. So they would be downstairs passing out cookies, doing a cooking demo. Mm -hmm. I even had students out in the streets doing ice carving, you know, one cold February day. Oh. You haven't seen nothing, so you've seen a teenager with a chainsaw going at on a block of ice. It's kind of fun. So. Gosh, we're going to have to keep up with those events. Those are absolutely yeah. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Those are the kinds of things that you never hear about when you talk about uh, Chicago Public Schools. Those are fantastic. Yeah, I, I mean, you hear about all the negative mm -hmm. stuff, but I'm only here for the positive stuff. And not too much negative has happened, you know, in my department. You know, a lot of kids do well. They, you know, they're graduating, higher graduation rate than the normal graduation rate. Okay. They're coming out with industry certifications, food handling, both city and state. So that makes them very employable. We give them work skills to, again, make them employable because we want to make them ready for life. Mm -hmm. You know, so if college doesn't work out, I want you ready to live a and give them some self-esteem that they have purpose. And I wish there was a guy like me when I was in CPS, you know. But, you know, we're here. And there's others, there's 72 other pathways. Mm -hmm. So they do barbering, cosmetology, there's nursing, there's uh, carpentry, IT. They're going to open up five schools that are focusing on STEM, IT, that's math, science, okay. education. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's a lot going on in, in CPS within the uh, Career Technical Education Department. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So how did you get started? How did I get started? Yes, how did, you, how did this love affair with food start for you? Um, well, I'm, I'm a big guy, <laughs> okay? I like, I like to eat, and I, I come from a rather large family. I'm the baby in the family, and uh, sometimes it's eat or be eaten. <laughs> and so, you know, if you run out of food, because it wasn't enough for me, I'm learning to make it myself, so I could just have my own thing. But I found it was something I was pretty good at. A lot of people said, that's tasty. My older brothers and sisters used to ask me, you know, to bring their girlfriends over in the morning and make them breakfast, and they would give me money. <laughs> and I wanted video games when I was young, so I used to work for that. And then I started selling cookies. My mom made a lot of different cookies. She was a pretty good baker. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to sell cookies as a little side thing when mm -hmm. I was a teenager, so kind of legal, you know. Right. And I made uh, some pretty good money in the 80s. You know, I used to walk around with a, a lot of single-dollar bills in Inglewood and People thought I was, you know, that kid, the cookie kid. But okay. no, you know, it was a legal business. Right. But I also found out girls like cookies, and <laughs> I like girls. And that was a great way to get a girlfriend. I look at it that way. <laughs> so after I got out, I, um, you know, thought about what I really want to do in college. Really didn't really want, really didn't mm -hmm. know. So I did culinary uh, and attended Kendall College. And that was a lot of fun, learned a lot, seeing a lot of people that don't look like me. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, it was a nice culture shock, but it was also to learn that the world's bigger than the neighborhood I grew up in. And then went ahead and went to college, got a bachelor's in journalism, and continued on. But um, I, I enjoyed it the whole time through. You know, food has always been there, but it's been a side hustle, a great way to make extra money, because people got to eat. Mm -hmm. People and have to eat. Yeah, so I've always um, kept a job going on through that field. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it's been a great social, social togetherness. Food brings people together, you know, at the funerals or, you know, to make friends or to, you know, meet your neighbor and you show up with the pie. You'd be surprised how much they're like, oh, hi, you know. <laughs> so that's what food is and food's there. And, and it's always been there for me and it's always going to be there for everybody. So I, I enjoy what it is and that's why, you know, my love affair started with it and it continues on. 
Now, you're also a master scuba diver, right? We were joking about this <laughs> earlier. So, <laughs> <laughs> do you ever dive just to see <laughs> what's in the ocean that maybe you could bring back with you? I often sit around going, that is one big grouper. I, <laughs> that is a 200-pound grouper. You know how much meat this grouper <laughs> would yield if I can get this puppy to the surface? <laughs> and a lot of times, I got a lot of pictures of a lot of lobsters. Okay. And I'm talking lobsters with probably a good two-pound tail. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, oh, you look delicious. And I'm just <laughs> underwater just talking all nasty to him, like I'll just tear you up, you know. <laughs> If I could just bring you up. They're under, like, in some of the wrecks. I would uh -huh. go dive in a lot of wrecks. Uh, slave ships I've, I've dived on in the Caribbean. Oh. And so I like to jot those down in my journal. Mm -hmm. and I, I hit here, and I've been there, and this is what I saw. And then sometimes I write down, and I would like, oh, here's a recipe. I'm going to put this with an olive sauce, and I would eat this fish like this. So I do sit around sometimes. When I come to the surface, I'm hungry then. Cause <laughs> you spend about, you know, a couple of minutes, 80 feet on the water, You'll be starving too, so. <laughs> but yeah, I, I enjoy uh, what, it's mother nature. I tell mm -hmm. people, if you don't believe in God, go scuba diving, and you will believe there is a higher power. If you want to call him God, or Allah, or Jehovah, or whatever your belief is, it's real when you go under there, because that is not man-made. And it's you, and it's mother nature, and, and it's just bringing it to you. You know, no cages, and I love it. So uh, I think they sense your desire <laughs> <laughs> for fish and olive sauce and they stay away from you. Yeah, well, yeah, they all look at me going, here comes a fish and olive sauce guy. <laughs> right. No, um, it, it's, it's just, it's fun, you know, and, and yeah, I don't think fish really know that I want to eat them or not. <laughs> Sometimes they're just looking at me, but as soon as I blow bubbles out, my regulator, they all kind of swim away, so I try to sip my air real slowly and enjoy communing with nature and stand there as long as I can and enjoy their world and then come back up because it, it resets my soul. Mm -hmm. And I tell people that's what I use to when life gets me down and people say, ah, go jump in the lake. I'm like, you damn skippy, I'm gonna go <laughs> jump in the lake. Uh-huh, no <laughs> problem, because I will feel better and you know, I won't turn around and end up you know, making the 10 o'clock news in the, world, in the <laughs> worst kind of way. So, yeah, I enjoy it. Now, what's your favorite thing to, to cook? Wow, that, that depends on which way the wind is blowing. You know, and I, I can say something corny like whatever my wife likes, you know, but then all my guys can go, hey, Dave, you know, <laughs> you got a problem, man. <laughs> but um, I, like, I like grilling. Mm -hmm. um, I love um, roasting. So I, I love what meat does, you know, what it goes through, mm -hmm. and, and smoking meats. I love the whole chemical process when, you know, how meat and the smoke blesses the meat and turns it kind of pink and puts that smoke ring on mm -hmm. there. I love that type of stuff. Um, I love doing a lot of things with shrimp and, and scallops and salmon. Um, things with rice make a pretty oh, mean okay. risotto. You know, and still I go back to my first love, which is cookies. I mean, I'll probably be a much skinnier and stealthier <laughs> guy. But um, I like doing That's all right. We left, the <laughs> we left the physical trainer at home at night, so we don't have to worry yes, about yes. it. Yes, yes. You know, more, 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 you know, just more, more for television. That's you know, right. get more bang for your buck tonight, That's ladies right. and gentlemen, out there in Chicago. So, yeah, but I, I, it depends. I enjoy a lot of different things. Uh, I try to take our soul food, our traditional food, mm -hmm. and put ingredients that identify, but like black eyed peas, for instance. Okay. Make, mash half of them up and then mix them with the whole black eyed peas, saute up a mirepoix vegetables, that's like celery, onions, carrots, uh, peppers, a little bit of thyme, mm -hmm. and then fold that in there and make cakes out of them. And then roll them in some panko breadcrumbs and then and a little bit of uh, oil just sear them to the mm -hmm. nice and crispy. Mm -hmm. And they have a little bit like a, a, a sun-dried tomato relish on top. So it's like, it's something that we know, but I'm changing it around and making it different. You know, instead of you eating Hoppin' John every day or, you know, stewed black eyed peas, here's a different variation. Or collard green coleslaw. Taking collard greens and slicing them up real thin and giving it an Asian dressing. But, you know, all the vitamins and nutrients are there. Collard green is a powerful grain. And, and, and people know this, but by the times we boil it half to death with a ham hock or a <laughs> big old turkey leg and right. call it a day, you can eat it, you know, sauteed or you can eat it raw. So I like doing things like that and twisting up our traditional food mm -hmm. and trying to serve it to our people differently and getting them to see our food lighter and brighter and fresher. Yeah. How do you get kids to eat vegetables? This is something that parents struggle with all the time. Mm. So other than other than like I used to do, if you don't eat your vegetables, it'll be your breakfast in the morning. <laughs> what's, a, what's a friendlier way? Yeah, I, I try not, you don't want vegetables 
you know, just like with education, you don't want it to be an enemy. Right. You know, you want it to be enjoyable. And, and, and I go by, this is my mantra that I've adopted, you know, working in CPS. It's engage, educate, and empower. Okay. But if we can engage the kids, you know, let's make something together, like a pizza. It is a good platform. Get some pita bread, and you got a grill, or you can eat your, heat your oven up to mm -hmm. 500 degrees. You can have the kid put a little sauce on there, and a little bit of cheese, mm -hmm. and then pick out what they want. You know, and then they want to really, kids want to please you. So, you know, being, if you're a parent, mm -hmm. this is a good way to get them into it. So if you like zucchini, the kids are going to want to try it. My kids love asparagus. Now, I don't know how many people say that seven-year-olds really love asparagus, but they eat them as if they were french fries, if I grill them up. Because daddy and mommy, we love asparagus. Now, the next day, you know, I don't want to be around the kids, you know, in the morning. Yeah, but <laughs> but yeah. it's give them a chance to put it on, say, pizza. Okay. And, and they feel like this is my pizza and I own it. Now I'm gonna try it, and then for you know, like you know, I like red onions or I like spinach. You know, I, I'm really into this fruit or that fruit. And my daughter eats all types of fruit. Matter of fact, my daughter is almost a vegetarian. I don't know whose baby she <laughs> is. I don't know if she ain't my baby. She ain't my wife's baby, but because we're meat eaters, but she is almost a veg. She eats a lot of fruit. She eats a lot of vegetables. She loves it, and I'm like, okay, I I'm gonna give it to you, baby, if you want it. But you empower them and you gauge them. Mm -hmm. But you got to show it to them. You got to make it relevant okay. to them, you know. So I try to flavor it in some way they may like it, short of frying it, you know. But that's one way of just getting the kids to do it, you know. Try it like I try it. If we can get the rappers out there, and I will say this live on TV, if we can get like Lil Wayne or Nicki Minaj or Waka Flocka to talk about eating tofu or eating vegetables and making it boss. Right. We can get a lot of kids to change up that's their right. diets right, right there on the spot. Or spare, yeah. grilled asparagus yeah, with grilled the Maybach asparagus. music. Yeah, yeah. Maybach music, grilled asparagus, asparagus. Put the flame hots down, pick up some asparagus. So if we can get them to eat, a lot of these kids are followers. You know, I think they'll get into it. That's another way. Make it pop. Now, a lot of parents are struggling with uh, health concerns with their children. Mm -hmm. In the news, you see a lot of parents whose kids are suffering from juvenile diabetes, which is incredibly serious or in even extreme obesity. Mm -hmm. And they're struggling with how do you start? You've got a kid who's been eating nothing but fast food, living off of McDonald's or, or wherever they, they eat. And now, all of a sudden, they're 200 pounds overweight or 80 pounds overweight and they've got diabetes. Where do you start? You know, I mean, you have to start at home because a, a big reason why their, their health is awry if you look at it, it's because their parents aren't eating right. I, I look at a lot of kids, I don't eat green vegetables. And I'm like, hmm, talk to the parents. I don't eat green vegetables. We could be talking about three generations of people who just void of green vegetables. All right? I mean, everything in moderation. They also got to learn that. But someone has to teach it to them. Mm -hmm. Now, I sit around on the, on the board with the USDA and you know, represent CPS and mm -hmm. represent my program and what I do in agriculture. But I tell them, if we're going to go in these food deserts, if we're going to go into Inglewood or we're going to go into North Lawndale, we've got to have somebody that's going to be able to really get with these families. Mm -hmm. You know, social service agencies, they've got to start working with us. These big conglomerate churches, they've got to start tithing back and working in these communities. we all got to start working together. It can't be just a party of one. And we've got to make it, like, popular. That's one way, I would say. That's like I talked about the rappers. I really wasn't joking. I'm for <laughs> real about that. You know, also tell them to invest in a 401k too. You know, but um, make it make it pop like that, and get these agencies to start getting people that they can relate to, to start talking to them about eating right, eating healthy. You know, and I'm not saying I'm not the guy. I can show you how to make it taste good. <laughs> I got another guy with a body by Jake who can tell you about eating healthy. Okay. But you know, I'm the chef. <laughs> so I mean, I'm I'm not one to say put that down because you know. I got a guy that makes money, he can give me financial advice, I'll listen to him. So me being a big guy, I will say this right now, I'm not telling people, put the food down. They're like, you big yourself. You know, but I was bigger, and people knew me as a bigger right. guy, so I've lost a lot of, weight, lost a lot of weight to talk stuff, but I'm going to continue working on losing weight. And so getting it in there, getting into the neighborhood, mm -hmm. teaching them, showing them. We have uh, kitchens like the CPS, my mm -hmm. culinary kitchens, I'm in those deserts. I'm at Harper High School, I'm at Curie, I'm at uh, Manly High mm -hmm. School, Marshall High School, I'm at Finger. We have kitchens where we mm -hmm. can open up to the neighborhood and we can do 30, 40 people and eat and show them how to eat. 
We're going to be building gardens in these schools. And, and that's what my thing is going to be, just come in and then open up those gardens and start passing out okay. different dishes. So we got to bring them in and, and, and spend time with us. And that's it. You know. Well, yeah. let's get ready to cook. <laughs> to the viewers at home, I want you to stay put. We're going to take a little bit longer break right now because we're going to relocate from the set over to where we're going to do some cooking. And I want you guys to join us. This is a call-in show, so I want you to call in and ask questions. I'm going to look at the food. He's going to fix it. We're going to eat a little bit. We're just going to have a great time. So stay put, and we'll be right back. Listen to the words of the soul Everything Gonna be alright Everything is gonna be street and you are black. We are boys and girls of every age, all colors and all cultures. We are your nieces and your nephews, your brothers and sisters. We are your children. Before the Chicago Children's Advocacy Center, a child had to relive his or her story in up to 14 interviews with doctors, teachers, school counselors, police, special detectives, child protection agents, and lawyers. Children were brought to numerous locations and were repeatedly traumatized by the system. Now, the system works for them. At the Chicago Children's Advocacy Center, professionals across agencies and disciplines come together under one roof to collaborate. Abused children tell their stories one time in a safe environment. Care begins within days, not months. Our specialized programs and counseling help give abused children hope for the future. The Chicago Children's Advocacy Center restores trust once lost. I think it's important for anyone, any individual out there, any corporation, any foundation, regardless of where you live, who you are, is if it, uh, give a, uh, a contribution to the Advocacy Center. Uh, because what you're really doing is you're rebuilding the lives of children in our communities. No child should ever be lost because of an adult action or decision. All of us should rebuild the children's lives in their brothers and sisters in a family's situation. So I'd hope that people out there, regardless of who you are, is really, it's a worthwhile contribution to a center that's rebuilding the lives, both the mind, both the body, and the soul of children in our communities.
sang this song to me. There was a message in his melody. Welcome back to A Sip of Inspiration and Eat to Live. I have joined Chef Dave over at our in-studio makeshift salad station, actually. We're going to make a couple of salads. I asked him to start with a basic salad and then to show you how to make it more interesting from there mm -hmm. to actually add more ingredients. Because sometimes I think that salads are easy, but people think that they're hard to make. Mm -hmm. And then you can add just about anything that you want to a salad. So here we are, and I'm going to ask him some questions first now. I want you to know that we are waiting for someone to bring us forks. So if I eat with my fingers, it's going to be all right. Because in my fingers, it'll be my food. Yeah. So <laughs> <Your fingers coming. laughs> that's right, my <laughs> fingers are coming. <laughs> so he is now slicing a tomato and... Actually, I'm, I'm dicing a tomato. Dicing, one, excuse me. Yeah, one salad I, I'm going to make is going to be a Greek salad. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I worked at a lot of Greek restaurants, um, and you know it's real simple. It's just tomatoes, cucumbers, onions, feta cheese, and we make a vinaigrette. Oh, cool! So it's real, real simple, simple salad, but it has a lot of flavor, and um, it's good with or without a a meat. I did grill off some chicken, so we can either have it either way, you know, and that's what it's, uh, that's what we'll be doing right now. Now, any tips about cutting that so you don't cut yourself? The claw. Learn the claw. You got to learn how to hold your food like so and let, you know, you won't cut your knuckles. Well, you know, now you're chopping real tall or something, but let that also be your guide. But that's how you hold the food. People don't wash their fingers. Sometimes they're uh -huh. laying and they let their fingers like this and then they cut okay. like the, the pinky. Right. Didn't, they didn't notice that or the forefinger. Now I've cut I've cutting this thumb and these two fingers numerous amounts of times, you know, and they've grown back. I think I'm half brown. <laughs> you know, seriously, I'm like, I'm never going to see my nail again. And nails are back. So, you know, but yeah, it's called, it, we call it the claw. Okay, the claw. Like claw. Okay. Yeah. So um, that, that is a method for holding it. I uh, tell people, um, learn to work with a sharp knife. A lot of people have very dull knives in their house. I mean, they, on the tomato, leaning on the tomato, uh -huh, put their right. knee on the tomato. And I'm like, you should not do that. You ought to be able to let the tomato lay the knife and let it just slide right through the tomato. You don't have to put too much pressure okay. on your food. So if you're putting pressure on your food, your knives are too dull. Yeah, take it to a, a sharpener, uh, a knife a knife sharpener guy, and you can put a new head on it. Uh, or uh, learn to uh, get a, a stone, a wet stone, and watch videos on YouTube about how to sharpen your own knives, what angle to hold it at. And, you know, you can save a lot of money learning how to do that. Or, like I said, take it to a professional and let them just run it right through. It's like two bucks okay. a blade. And a lot of times, a lot of chefs will take all the knives to the guys and let them do it themselves. And it stays nice and razor sharp. And it, it would be your, your, your machine. Okay. You know, your own Cuisinart right here in your hand. So, you know, and buy a good knife. Don't buy, you know, I'm not going to name any knives. I don't want the knife companies coming after me. <laughs> but, you know, buy a good quality knife. And, and, the, and the best way is, is going to a, a nice store. You don't have to buy the whole kit. You can buy one knife at a time and just hold knives and feel how comfortable it feels in your hand. Okay. And does it feel like you're doing work or does it feel like, you know, easy, like an extension of yourself? Okay. So at least that's what I learned in school. Okay. So that's what I was a good knife. A good okay. knife. So okay. the, the five for nine ninety nine dollars no. doesn't qualify. Don't want to okay. don't want to do that at all. My okay. fingers have been saved. We have forks, and the my assistant is bringing the forks. She isn't prepped for television, and she's running out really quick. Thank you. Yes. We've got forks. This is cool. Give it up for the Give assistant. Give it up for the and assistant and with Ooh, forks. Yeah. All right. So right now I'm putting a dice of onions in here, a large dice. This now is I'm going to ask you a, another dumb question. Now mm -hmm. this is for the viewers at home. No such thing as dumb already questions. Just dumb answers. You know. I go through the trouble of peeling my onions and then trying to s cut them in half perfectly. But you just cut this in half, like down the center. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, you, I should have brought a whole onion in to show you how we would address it. You know, here's the uh, root part. Mm -hmm. There was a stem part that was mm -hmm. attached to the regular part. Right. You know, so it was sticking in the dirt and it was growing out the plant this way. Right. Okay, so we know that. So I cut off the part that had the, uh, the growth, the vegetable growth growing to it. Mm -hmm. So stem down, and then peel it off. Cut, cut it in half, right down the middle. Okay, if you want to focus in on that, right. that's cool. That's right. All right, and then after that, you have all these things. Now from there, you can make you know onion rings, and or you can slice it up for uh, julienne strips. Okay. Or you can do dice. And we want a consistent dice, and that's what I did 
was I took the knife and I cut in this way a couple of times, and then I cut down this way, and then cut it again this way. So it's three cuts, and you're going to get a consistent um, cut of onions, okay. all the same size. All the same size. Pretty much. This is cool. All right, and and this way you onion. control how much onion you want in it according to your taste. Yeah, of course. And that's the wonderful thing about doing this salad yourself is you can do it according to your taste. Uh, okay, yeah, according to how you want the night, how you want the night to go. So right. how you want the night to go? Okay. Yes, think about the night, and if, you know, make sure the other person has onions too. Then <laughs> and you're both okay. Okay. All right. So the same thing we have here. We also have cucumbers. Okay. Same type of cut. Okay. Same size. And the thing about the uh, Greek salad is all the cuts are the same size. Okay. All right. So. We got um, a three-quarter inch cut on everything. So right now we have um, you know, nice bright colors, mm -hmm. okay? I'm going to salt it a little bit. All right. And for those of you who know we don't have water, he's got his own little wet towel over here wiping his hands. So yes, nice I washed my cool. hands before we came back That's here on the right. set and everything, okay? So now we're going to make the vinaigrette. Okay. All right, we have uh, oregano. It's a Greek oregano, all right? Dill. Now, for my good friends at Old Town Oil, I'm not going to make you know, a big thing about it, but I go to Old Town Oil, it's on Wells Avenue. You can blend your own oils. Okay. So what I have here is a tangerine balsamic vinegar. Oh, wow. All right, and it smells just like tangerines. Let me smell. I got to smell. Oh, my that nice? God. Is that nice? That is nice. Yeah. And then I have here a blood orange olive oil. What? What? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put a little salt in here as well. All right, some black pepper. Everybody should get a pepper grinder. Pepper grinders are great. Right? Pepper grinders are great. Right. We've got a phone call, so we're taking calls while we're cooking. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, um, Chef Blackman. Uh, how do students get involved in uh, your cooking programs? Uh, do they have to be in high school? Do you have a program that starts in grade school? And uh, my next question is... Uh, how do you cook more healthier for people that are diabetic or pre-diabetic? Um, what's what level of diabetes we're talking about? Type one or type two? Okay. Right. Okay. Well, uh, for the high school program, it is sophomore through senior year. All right. There's 19 high schools. If you want to find out the high schools, you want to go to www.chooseyourfuture.org. And then you look up the culinary arts programs. It's one of the uh, tabs on the left side of the screen. And it will pull up all the high schools. It will tell you about the high school programs and which high schools that your student mm -hmm. should attend to be in it because they have to be in that particular high school to be in that particular program. Um, so uh, it's sophomore through senior, so 15 to 18-year-olds. Uh, our thing is to get them into college and to get them work ready, so both ways. Uh, diabetes. Uh, you have to watch your bread intake. You have to watch your carb intake because if you're diabetic, uh, that's going to convert into sugars. And then you have to watch those things. So you have to really watch what you eat. You have to read labels. So a um, lot of processed foods, you know, start avoiding those type of things. You know, start learning to cook your own things, things that you like. You know, if you can read, you can cook. That's what I tell people. So mm -hmm. looking at some websites, of, you know, type up Google, diabetic-friendly recipes. And you can find some things and give them a try. But, um, yeah, it's all, everything in moderation and keep it all in perspective. But um, that's one way of, 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 of that when you're diabetic. You've got to watch to eat. So no flaming hots? No flaming hots. But then again, I'm saying everything no. in moderation. <laughs> right. Okay? Two I'm flaming saying. hots. Okay. Yeah, two flaming hots every, uh, you can have it maybe every hour, two flaming hots. <laughs> okay. Can't flaming. have the whole bag. You know. Can't eat the whole right. bag. Okay. So I added some olive oil to this balsamic. All right, and I'm mixing it in together so it all is going to come together. It's called emulsification. Okay. Right? That's one of those Write that down. culinary terms that they use. So, you know, if you're not learning anything tonight, ladies and gentlemen, now you will. Okay. So, I'll put these guys back. So, we have a nice dressing. Simple mm. dressing. All right. It's, you know, it's cheap. It's easy. You don't have to pay like $5 for you with the grocery store. It's yours. You can control the amount of salt. You can control the amount of anything else you want to put in this. And it's simple. I just put four ingredients in here, just four. All right. This, we can dress this. We'll get a spoon. Stir this up. 
She's leaning up against me. This smells no, good. No this smells much. good. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we got plate number Here's one. Here's a here. set of twins. <laughs> what are you doing to my yeah. daddy? <laughs> what you doing? What you doing? Okay. Let's mount this up in the middle. And then we peel it with a feta cheese. Feta All cheese right. Is, it's a, you know, it, it's cow, sometimes goat cheese, but uh, this is uh, from a uh, dairy cow. Oh, okay. and I didn't know you could get feta from a dairy cow. Oh, yeah. I can get okay. feta from a dairy cow. I now, if you want to go further and you want to make this oh, more Oh, wait a minute. This is beautiful. This mm -hmm. is beautiful. I don't know that we can see this at home, but this looks a lot better than my pictures that people post on Facebook. This is beautiful. Mm. Okay. Lean in a little bit. Let, Let's let, lean in. Let, a let, little let bit. the audience eat it. Oh, eat this. Yeah. Look at there. Look at You'll the dressing. You see my dressing this breaking is, away, but it's this okay. This is beautiful. We've got to find the right camera here. See there? And I'm totally not gorgeous. And it took five minutes? Mm hmm. Didn't take long at all? Mm. Have a couple of ounces of chicken on there. And now, for those of you who just said, that is all wonderful, but where is the meat? So he's. There's, there's the meat. So we're just move this over here a little bit, and we and we now have meat. That's grilled chicken sliced at an angle to make it beautiful. Yeah, it's a nice little bias cut, you know, mm -hmm. so you can see. A bias cut. Yeah. Okay. An angle cut. Right. So. Okay. It's wonderful. And it's moving on with another dish. Okay. okay. So I can taste this. Yes, you can. Oh, cool. Okay. It's, it's edible. It's edible? Yes. Okay. Mm, thank you. I know I stepped yeah. off the scene. I know everybody's behind camera going, put them back on. She stepped off over there. I just need my bowl back. Mmm. This dressing is wonderful. Mmm. Mm -mm. All right, now this is a simple salad. This one's mine, okay? Simple salad, right, okay? This is one of my favorite salads right here, okay? I'm going to rub a glove on because I like to stir this up with my hands. Got a red onion. And I want a nice julienne real quick of it. Then slice them. Mm. Now, mm -mm -mm. lettuce. We'll talk about lettuce real quick. Okay. Iceberg. It's not lettuce. Okay, it's not <laughs> lettuce. We're not going to deal with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, iceberg is, is it has no nutritional value. All right, so you know how they say the darker the berry, the sweeter the, the fruit. Juice, right. All right, the darker the lettuce, the more nutritional value. Okay, spinach, kale, you know, uh, dark lettuce leaves, uh, dandelion leaves, um, arugula. All right, these things have more better, you know, they're better for your body. Lettuce, iceberg lettuce, okay, maybe on tacos if you have to have it like that, but dark lettuce is best. You know. I always recommend musculine greens. It's a mixture of spinach, it's rodicchio, it's a red leaf lettuce, uh, bib lettuce. It's about four lettuces, okay? Okay, so it's four lettuces to one, but we want to go dark. And that whole idea of using collard greens as kind of a leaf and salad is new to me. Yeah, so we have red onion in here. But I like collard greens, so. Yeah, but you can use it as actual salad. Oh, cool. You can, you know, okay. wash it off just like your mama taught you a whole bunch of times and go for it. All right. But you know they sell it in the package now, where you? No, I don't. <laughs> okay. that, that stuff has all the stems and everything. That's okay, but the stems are in there. I still like to actually play with my collard greens. <laughs> so I like to take the leaves out and take the center stems out, roll them up real tight like a cigar, okay, and then slice them real thin. All right, and, and okay. they, they saute okay. faster. These are craisins, uh, okay, sun-dried right. cranberries. Sun cranberries. Okay, right. and then also we have here some gorgonzola. And cheese. you know, and for parents at home, crazy. Raisins and even raisins are good substitutes or snacks for your kids if you're trying to break the habit of them snacking off of um, potato chips or mm -hmm. flaming Hots. These things are, are like wonderful. Yeah, craisins and uh, walnuts. Walnuts, pecans. pecans. You know. now, this is a raspberry vinaigrette. Now, I made this at home, okay, or you can store by store by. Uh, How do you make raspberry vinaigrette? Yeah. Uh, mashed raspberries, you need olive oil. And you add some herbs to it, you know, salt, whisk it up. Okay. okay. Right. But um, you can also buy it at the store. All right. So um, 
got to buy a low fat one, okay? You don't want to use too much of it, about a tablespoon. Uh, that's about as much dressing as you need. Mm -hmm. Get in the bowl. It's always good to have some rubber gloves. Stir this dressing up. Okay. And pass me that plate over here. And he has, a, he has beautiful plates, too. Yeah, you know, Crate and Barrel, too. You know, they got no, those right, sales no. going on, We gave, we gave. Okay, that didn't now. say that. I'm sorry. Didn't yeah. say that. Didn't say that. Call me sleeping. I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. So you have, you know, all these colors going on in there. You got the, the cranberries. You have the cheese peeking out. You have the red onions. Flavors come together. It all works. And that's what that dish is about. Let's see if we can get a picture of this, a shot of this. This is a wonderful looking salad. All of the wonderful dark greens are in here. And a little bit of the, the feta cheese as well as the... Um, Crazians, I think mm -hmm. I have difficulty saying that. No iceberg lettuce allowed. Right. Now, yeah. salad like this, you can probably fetch about how much? Eleven bucks? Mm-hmm. Right, you know, this is three dollars. You know, and I went to, I'm not going to end the grocery store. Three bucks, the cheese cost about two dollars, uh, craisins cost four dollars, but you know, you don't need, you can use that. No, you get a huge bag. You get a like huge bag for four dollars. Yeah. Okay, the uh, dressing, if you're going to buy dressing pre-made, it's $1.50. Okay, but how much can you do? You can get about four salads out of this. Okay. All right, so a family of four can have this. Chicken, five bucks. Okay, so we're looking at less than $20 for a dinner salad for four people. Okay, have it with a bread, piece of bread or something for your, 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 uh, your carb, and you're good. So you, you now have a nice filling dinner salad right here. So I can put some chicken breast on top of this, okay. and that rounds it out. Okay. And if you have, uh, I guess, leftover, too, because I've seen in, even in restaurants where they'll take, like, I don't eat red meat, but I've seen them take, like, um, steak and slice it. Steak, lamb. And lay it on, yeah. and lamb, and lay it on a salad, too. It's a beautiful presentation. Right. You know, and I have a, you know, a gas grill. I, have, I mean, I have a charcoal grill and a uh -huh. gas grill, but the gas grill, you can turn it on, 10 minutes, it's hot, nice, white, hot, you know, uh, great. And I, I sear a lot of stuff and, and cook it off and put some grill marks mm -hmm. on there, you know, because if you don't have time to, you know, set your coals on uh -huh. and do all that stuff and you're in a hurry because everybody's in a rush these days. Right. Everybody's rush, rush, rush. This didn't take that long. We did this live and direct. You know, uh, there's mm -hmm. a little prep involved. That's called your mise en place. But once you get that set up, you know, you're ready to roll. And, and that's what it's all about, planning on a Sunday of what you want to eat Monday through Friday, and okay. you can save more money instead of, you know, eating out at restaurants all the time. You can eat restaurant quality food with, with careful planning and, and, and looking at recipes and decide how you want to eat it. Yeah. And cut your sugar intake and your salt intake because you control all of that when you're at home. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. I am excited about this. I'm going to eat that too after the show, so don't touch my plate. I won't touch your plate. <laughs> that's right. No okay. Um, we're going to go back to the set, so we're going to mm -hmm. take a little bit of a break here. I want you all at home to stay put, of course, and if you have questions, give us a call. The number's on the screen, 312 Give us a call. We will be happy to, to answer your questions. This is Tomorrow is another. the vinaigrette. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> I don't want to go back to the show. And that's me, future Hall of Famer. That's Grandpa. He's my best friend. Grandpa's got diabetes, but he's got it under control. I keep my blood sugar close to normal. That means I watch what I eat and walk every day. I always take my medicine and test my blood sugar because I want to be around to see the next Jackie Robinson. Control your diabetes for life. Call 1-800-438-5383. It wasn't supposed to be like this. My baby's so worried. My grandbaby's so tiny. No one knows why she was born premature. Or if she'll be okay. can do is wait for the answers. What's wrong with 
this picture. Half of young Americans can't locate economic powers like Japan and India. 20% can't even find the Pacific Ocean. Without geography, our children aren't ready for the world. Geography is everywhere. It's incredible creatures. Rhythm, fashion, flavor. It's economics and politics. It's change. Understanding connections between people and places is critical in the 21st century. That's why we created MyWonderfulWorld.org. Go there now for your free parent and teacher action kits and give our kids the power of global knowledge. Because kids who understand our world today can succeed in it tomorrow. here. I got it last time. I'm busy. Busy? For some people, living with painful hips or knees can turn little jobs into big jobs. But it doesn't have to be that way. Today, physicians and patients are partnering together, choosing from a new generation of treatments and therapies that can not only reduce hip and knee pain, but restore a little spring. Life's too short to be stuck in the slow lane. To get up to speed on just how far hip and knee treatments have come, visit orthoinfo.org, a public service message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Don't forget, tomorrow's trash day. I'm waiting because I don't want to get a disease. I have a future ahead of me, and I don't want to mess up my life. If my husband asks me if he's the first, I want to say yes. Yes, yes. Because I respect you. I have so much going for me. A child would only slow me down. I'm trying to break that cycle. Sex is a very special thing I only want to share with one person. There are too many consequences, consequences. The union between two people. I would always regret it. I'm protecting my daughter. Waiting mind. doesn't make you less of a man. I'm waiting because it's the most precious gift I can give. A bird sang this song to me. There was a message in its melody. Sweetest lyrics that I ever heard. Welcome back to A Sip of Inspiration. I'm Stephanie Wilson Coleman, your host for tonight's episode of Eat to Live with Chef Dave Blackman. We just had a wonderful time in our in, in studio kitchen making salads. And we were talking about how we can change these two salads we made. For instance, the first one, which 
I've kind of eaten, so it's not as cute as it used to be. <laughs> you can add some Tuscan beans to it for those of you who are vegetarians and you don't eat any meat at all. So you could take off the chicken, add the beans in it, and you mm -hmm. get the same kind of effect from the salad. And then for those of you who eat more meat or who eat from the other world, you can add lamb or you can add um, beef or steak, steak mm -hmm. to it also. You can add pork to it. And you can have that salad and lots of variations. So I think this is wonderful. The other one we showcased was one with all of the perfect greens. Would you hold that wonderful plate? Hand me this wonderful plate. I haven't had a chance to touch this one yet. But with all of the wonderful dark greens, remember, we learned that iceberg was not lettuce, so it's not allowed here. And this has craisins, and you can add nuts to it if you want to. Mm -hmm. Just explore in the kitchen and we've learned that we did all of this for four people for a, a little less than twenty dollars so it's actually wonderful price now chef Dave and I were talking about some of his wonderful dishes that he's prepared in the past and I was talking about the salad that I had once that he prepared this huge stack salad with mm -hmm. the stuff in it yeah oh. that was uh Tell my, us about my that. twist on the uh cob salad okay you know it had chopped eggs and some people had bacon if they wanted bacon mm -hmm. in there uh peas uh potatoes mm. and they had the the greens the muscular mm -hmm. greens in there as well and or uh, red onions uh and then we took mm. barbecue chicken toss it we grilled it and then we just tossed in some barbecue sauce we put it inside of a vessel we packed it real hard mm -hmm. and you take it off and it would stay molded like a cylinder and it was real impressive when people come to the table and they're like whoa and then they would touch it and it would like fall apart of course yes but yeah people just like that it's a barbecue cob salad oh know. wow it's just mm -hmm. beautiful yes it is yeah. uh, i understand that we have a caller um is the caller still there i think i got a little carried away with the salad hello oh hi how are you doing hi this is karen you all, this show has been wonderful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see different ways of trying to get my family to eat um, without it being a big soul food fiasco, mm -hmm. which I love my soul food now, but you made the food look interesting and inviting and delicious, Chef Dave. Thank you. I just want to say thank you for giving me different options to feed my family. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I got some other things. You know, my website went live, so you can check me out at uh, chefdavidblackman.com. I got plenty of recipes there, and um, also in the <laughs> Oops. There's a Chicago. Ouch. Ouch. Right. He also has on his website pictures of the kids yes. cooking um, from the school system. And when I looked at some of those, I was really surprised. At, I mean, I, you know that they're high school kids, but then when you see them, they really look like high school kids, and they're just having a ball. Mm-hmm. And you know, th their self-esteem. Yeah, they're, they're having just a like, ball. Man, look what I'm doing. I'm doing this, and they're, they're having a blast. And it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun watching something that I love, and it's more than 19 years now. I think we're on 23 years. Okay, perhaps. we won't <laughs> tell anybody. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. <laughs> but um, to to see these young kids just brighten up, and, and and they're picking up, and they're wanting to do, and they're doing it, and they're doing something that I've been doing most of my life, and they're, and they're so young, and their future is so ahead of them mm -hmm. it, it, I, I really get off on that I really enjoy that that's like a high to me to see young kids lighting up and, 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 and seeing a purpose you know when I realize this God put me on earth to do this mm -hmm. to entertain people to feed people to be part of people's lives in these moments I like that but now that I can see it and kids can see it uh -huh. that's awesome it is awesome and I, I enjoyed watching the clips on the on the website of the kids cooking and the pictures it's like oh my god this is absolutely fantastic and this is a part of public school education that we don't hear anything about well I always joke and I know people don't like the joke but I'm gonna say it anyway unless I shoot some kid in the foot <laughs> in my program you ain't gonna hear about my program <laughs> okay. I, know I don't like that but hey I, I can say that but yeah it, it, it's it's a thing you don't hear too much about but my thing is to market it Mm -hmm. And I'm going to market that program. Like I said, I'll take them down to City Hall and cook for the mayor for all I care, as long as you start getting more ink. But, I mean, you haven't heard the last of me. CPS knows I had a lot of things in my chamber that I'm getting ready to put together all for right. these kids, and we're going to roll out. So 
We're going to be in the paper a couple of times okay. this year. I'm going to tell you it's going to okay. be big. All right, and we're going to support you, and you make sure that we know when your next Capstone event is, mm -hmm. and I'll make sure that the viewers at home know about that, too. Uh, we are just about out of time. This has been like such a fantastic show, and I can't wait to finish eating my food. So I want to thank you for agreeing to bring all of this stuff and pack up all of the knives and the food and come and show us some of the love that you feel when you cook, and we felt that too. My pleasure. And to the viewers at home, I want you to know that we have now tonight put the future, your future, back into your hands. See, you are what you eat. So I want you to make certain that you're eating very healthy. And start with just the little things. Start introducing your kids to all of the stuff we talked about tonight. But of course, before you do that, that means you're going to have to open your minds to start to love food. I remember seeing in a restaurant that in order to live well, you have to eat well. Mm -hmm. That's so true. So, and will you come back again and do it? Sure. Okay. Sure. Cool. Sure. Cool. So with that, we are going to say good night. And as usual, I want you to know that life is far too short to drink cheap champagne or to eat poorly for that matter. Dream big and live the life that you've imagined. And now the ball is in your court. So what are you going to do next? This is Stephanie Wilson Coleman. This has been a sip of inspiration and it's also been my pleasure. Sang this song to me There was a message in his melody Sweetest lyrics that I ever heard There's a message in the songs of birds Tomorrow is another day Living is the only way Tomorrow's gonna ever come Listen to the words of the song Everything Everything is gonna be Now the trees sang the song to me He said the birds sang it to the breeze Just in case I was feeling down And didn't really want to be around He said the breeze sometimes come with rain Nothing in life stays the same Tomorrow's gonna bring a change The message remains the same Everything